Stayallday.com. You're now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically in the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us to pruning yourself to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that's called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is, we're getting into part two of what will be our seven-part series of things your older self wishes that you had done sooner. Uh, before we get into this, I remind you all of two things. First of all, my daily motivation, Monday motivation message is guaranteed. Focus, have you focus sharp and on point to start your day or your week, respectively. All you got to do is text me and be in my text community. When we start sending messages out again, you'll be getting this. So just text me now so it's taken care of. My direct number, 305-384-6894. Number's down below in the description. Secondly, work on your game university. That's a place where I do all of our high-level coaching with our high-level people. These are people who are top 2% performers. Those of you who want to be at the highest level of what you do, want to make sure that you're squeezing all the juice out of your orange, so to speak. You want to maximize out on your potential on your personal side and the professional side. Go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. That link is down below in the description as well. Let's get into this picking up right where we left off here. I don't have to give any intro here because you already got this uh, intro from yesterday's episode. So we are picking up right where we left off, which is at point number four of things your older self will wish that you had done sooner. Number four, the concept that if something is meant to be, it will come and knock on your door is complete bullshit. The concept that if something is meant to be, it will come find me. If it's meant to be, then it'll be around. It will wait for me. It will be available. It will be made easier for me. This is a bullshit concept. What it should say is if it's meant to be, it's up to me. That's what that's the that's the phrase that you should go with if you're going to use this phrase at all. A thing that is meant to be, the thing is meant to be rather because you went and made it occur. All right, that's how something is meant to be because you decided to go do it. It was meant to be, which means you meant to go do it, and that's why it happened. Very rarely does an ideal opportunity simply fall in your lap through no doing or intention of your own. Let me repeat that sentence. Very rarely does an ideal opportunity simply fall in your lap through no doing or intention of your own. If you want an ideal situation to occur in your life, whatever that ideal situation is, and you can think up what it is, there is something you must do. You must do stuff and you must be conscious thinking about it and intentional, meaning you are focusing on it in order for it to happen. Very rarely does that just randomly occur. And if it does randomly occur, consider yourself lucky and do not get uh, hypnotized into thinking that that's the way life is supposed to go because it's not. If you ever do have something randomly happen to you that becomes an ideal situation, consider yourself lucky. And again, do not uh, get complacent thinking that it's supposed to happen or even hoping that it happens again because you'll be sitting around waiting or right? eating the Snickers bar because you're not going anywhere for a while. Anything that you want to occur in your life, you have to be thinking about it consciously and then you need to take intentional action around making it happen. That is That gives you the highest uh, probability, the highest likelihood that it actually occurs. Otherwise, the possibility, probability that it occurs is very low. People usually come about this mistake here thinking that things are going to just happen to them, either by looking at someone else's outcome and thinking that it just happened to them when it may seem like that from the outside, but that's not the case if you actually knew the full story because often uh, what people are showing you is not the whole story of what's going on. I did a whole episode on that uh, not too long ago. Let me see if I can... Uh, episode 234, way back, I talked about be careful of passing judgment because you don't always know the whole story. And there was an episode that I did recently. I'm not seeing the, the title of it right here in front of me, but this is something that uh, we have talked about is that the, the picture that you are being shown is not always uh, the full picture of a situation. That was episode number 2911. The full picture is never as pretty as a snapshot. So when you're looking at other people's situations, it looked like it just happened for them. It didn't just happen for them. Something else happened that you just are ignorant of so you think is one way when, when it's actually another way. Or the other thing that happens is you don't want to be pushy or too forward or too aggressive in going after your goals 
And instead, you hang back and hope that things will just find their way to you. I know and have known a lot of salespeople and entrepreneurs who have this affliction. I've known a lot of athletes who have this affliction. I've known a lot of just people, period, who have this affliction where there are things that they want and they have expressed that they want these things, but they're unwilling to take direct action and be aggressive in going after those things. And therefore, they end up settling for something less than what they wanted because they were unwilling to go forward and get the things that they want. You want certain things in your life, folks. Understand you need to be bold and aggressive and conscious and intentional about getting them. That doesn't mean you need to be a jerk. Doesn't mean you need to uh, bother other people or violate other people's rights. It just means you can't sit around and wait for it to happen. There's a big gap of things in between those two, in between those two points. So your older self, if they could talk to you right now, it would tell you, stop sitting around and waiting for certain things to occur because you're going to become this person, the older self, and those things will still have not occurred. Point number five. Again, we're on part two of our uh, what will be a seven part series, things that your older self wishes it could tell you right now. Number five, wasted time is death. Wasted time is death. Now, I mean this one as close to literally as can be without it actually being literal. When you waste time, you don't literally die on the spot. But you are getting one minute and one day closer to dying with every period of time that you do not use towards achieving your life's ideals. So over the next 15 minutes, if you don't do something towards getting to your life's ideals, well, you're 15 minutes closer to nine. Can we agree? Okay, can we agree that no matter what you do in the next 15 minutes, you are 15 minutes closer to being dead? Okay, everybody can agree with that, right? Okay, so if you spend the next 15 minutes not doing anything that is going to productively move you towards your desired outcome, then you are moving yourself closer to dying and you didn't get any closer to enjoying your life the way that you want to live. That is death. That's, again, as close to dying as you can be is using time and not using it properly because the time is gone. You can't get it back and you didn't do anything to get to your ideals yet. Unless you already got your ideals and all you're doing now is just enjoying them. But I don't know anyone for whom that description is accurate. Every person I know has something that they want. I know people with a whole lot of money. They want to make more money. I know people who are, they want to get in better shape. I know people want to get a better relationship. I know people have a whole lot of great things going on, but there's something that's nagging them and bothering them that they want to make better. I have not met a single adult human being for whom they said everything's perfect and I don't need anything. Not one. So every minute that you're letting go by but not using it to get to what you want, what are you doing? You're wasting time. And wasted time is death. So when you waste time, again, you're one minute and one day closer to it being over and you still haven't gotten the outcome. So if you spend all day today doing nothing useful or productive for your life, and you have the choice of doing that. When you wake up tomorrow, you are one day closer to nine, but you have not gotten a day's worth of life out of yesterday because you used it to do nothing. You understand how that works? Every day you use to do nothing to get closer to what you want uses wasted that part of your life. That part of your life is dead and you didn't do anything. So you lost. You lost that day. That wasted time was wasted life. And understand that all of your used up life, as we understand through our current understanding of science, leads to death. Every day, every week, every month, every year, this is closer to our time being up and the whole game for us individually being over. So if you can get yourself to equate wasted time to dying or losing or being defeated, any of those things that can move you to action, maybe you will find yourself wasting less time. You hear me talk about time all the time here on this show. I talk about having a sense of urgency, I talk about not wasting time. I talk about making sure that you are reminding yourself that you don't have unlimited time. Therefore, you need to have a sense of urgency about the time that you are using, how you're using it, when and where you are using it and why you are using it. Making sure you're getting time wasting resources out of your life, such as certain individuals, habits, ideas, circumstances, whatever is taking time away from your life, but is not giving you what you want. It needs to be eliminated and removed forcefully and immediately. Uh, you have to be urgent about doing these things because Again, life will just keep using you if you allow it to. But if you push back and decide that you're going to have things a certain way, life will, it tends to be willing to work with you. But you got to make it clear what you want from life. If you're not clear and assertive about what you want, then life will make decisions for you. And you usually won't be happy with them, at least when you get to becoming this older self that we're talking about. And you're looking back and saying, damn, how was I so dumb as to not understand this? But see, nobody who's listening to this episode right now, none of you is going to have that problem. 
The reason none of you is going to have that problem is because you had Dre Baldwin here telling you all the time, stop wasting time. Stop allowing your time to be wasted. Stop being unintentional and unconscious about what's happening in your life. Stop sleepwalking. Get a sense of urgency and uh, get serious about making sure that you set your life up the way that you want it to be now while you still have the time and the energy and the resources to do so. Because when you become this older version of yourself, look, you might not have you might have had the energy to do it. You may be too tired. All right? From what I hear, I haven't gotten there myself yet, but from what I hear, when you get to a certain age, your energy is not the same. You don't have the same energy to bounce around all day and do stuff the same way that some of you listen to this today might have. Uh, you might not have that same energy 20 years from now or 30 or 40 years from now, even though you're still alive, you don't have the same energy. And energy is the capacity to do work. So when your capacity to do work goes down, well, guess what? Less work is going to get done. So you don't want to wait till you're 80 and decide you're going to get serious about life because you don't have the energy to be as serious as you could be when you're 35 or 40 or 22. So do it now. Point number six, today's topic, once again, is things that your older self will wish that you had done sooner. Number six, stay in touch with your friends. There have been many studies, TED Talks, books, and articles shared about people when they reach old age, or let's say old age being they're close to death. They know that it's almost over. And they get interviewed and they get asked about their regrets from their younger years. The one that has stuck out the most to me is this one right here, staying in touch with your friends. People wishing that they had stayed in touch with their associates as they get to old age and they start to think of people who, from whom they lost touch 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and they have no idea what happened to those people. There are studies out there, and I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but there are studies out there that say, by the time you leave home from college, for college, those of you who go, or you decide to move out of your parents' house, whatever time that is, let's say that's in your late teens or early 20s, you have spent, by that point, about 80% of all the time you will ever spend with your parents, or those of you who are parents and you have kids. By the time they move out, they spend about 80% of all the time they're ever going to spend with you. By the time they move out, and they can be 18, they can be 25, and 80% of the time is gone that y'all going to have together. It's said that when you leave school, such as high school or college, that you spend about the same amount of time that you, have, you will spend with your friends. You have already spent, rather, the same amount of time you spend with your friends. So when you're in college and you graduate, you spend about 80% of the time you're ever going to spend with those friends of yours that you made when you were in college. So staying in touch with your friends becomes more difficult because they are not right there in your face every day. Same thing with your family members, your parents or your kids, those of you who are parents. Right? You have to stay in touch with them because you have to intentionally rather stay in touch with them because when they're living under your roof, mom or dad, well, you don't have to think about staying in touch with them because you know you're going to see them every day. All right. They're right there down the hall. Right? They're right there downstairs or upstairs. And when you're with your friends in college, well, you know where they are. They're in the, the dorm next door or in the apartment complex across the campus. You know exactly where they are. You're all in the same physical environment. But when everybody leaves that same physical environment, the contact goes down because now it takes what? Effort for people to stay in touch. And you know what's hard for people to do? Anything that involves effort. Our human beings, what have I told you? Human beings are naturally lazy. So this is why when the only thing that allows you to stay in touch with your friends or your family is a simple text message or email or phone call, this is why 80% of the contact has already happened because most people are too lazy to even do that because it used to be you didn't have to even do that. You can just walk outside, you see them. Come out of your bedroom, you see your mom. All right, come out of your dorm, you see your friends. Now you got to call them. Now you got to text them. Now you got to email them. Now you got to arrange a time for everybody to meet. And this is effort. And you'd be surprised how little required effort will push many people out of the game. Staying in touch is not that hard, but compared to having to do nothing, it's hard. So many people, what happens is they lose touch with their friends as they age because they're focused on your career or you're focused on your own family that you create outside of the family that you had so much once we become adults that you don't take time to remember those friends. And you want to make sure you make a discipline to stay in touch with yours, because if you lose touch with those friends, that's one of the things that one of the things that a lot of people who have gotten to that old age near death, they tend to regret. One of the things they'll regret is that I spent so much time working that I didn't really get to enjoy life. Another one is that you didn't become the person who you really wanted to become. Another one is I didn't stay in touch with my friends. Those are the top three that I see.
Didn't have the courage to be who I wanted to be. Spent too much time working, not enough time enjoying myself, and allowed my relationships to deteriorate. One, two, three. And not necessarily in that order, but those are the three biggest regrets. So these are things that your older self is going to wish that you knew now. So I'm telling you now, so you're basically getting a cheat code from 25 to 50 years in the future. Let's recap today's class, which is part two of our seven part series, things that your older self will wish you had done sooner. Number four, understand that the concept of something that's meant to be, it will come and find me is nonsense. If something's going to happen is because you went and made it happen. Number five, wasted time is death. Every time you waste time, you're a minute closer to death and you didn't do anything with that minute to get yourself to your ideals. That's a bad idea. And number six, stay in touch with your friends, because when you get to the end of life, you're going to wish that you had kept those relationships because life is really about relationships. It is not about uh, the money or the attention or the followers on social media or your any type of analytics or data. It is about relationships. That when you are in your last days, the thing that you're going to wish you had the most is relationships with other people, not uh, these things that will no longer mean anything when you're about to be dead. But the relationships, those will always stay with you. All that said, tomorrow we'll be getting into the next part of this series. Make sure you text me so you're in my community. Once we start sending those messages again, you'll be getting them. Also, work on your game. University, four part, four pillars, mindset, strategy, systems, accountability for personal and professional development with me as your direct coach. Go to work on your game, university.com. Work on your game. Dre, all.